Now, these are the two types of lenses what we are going to discuss. This is concave and this is convex. Okay. So, on the concave side, we say we have thinner at the uh, center and bulged at the edges. On the other hand, on the convex lens, it is bulged at the center and thinner at the edges. Okay. Now, I can imagine that this particular part, this left side part of the this lens is a part of a bigger sphere. Okay. When it is a part of a bigger sphere, what will happen is for this particular sphere, we have a center. So, which will obviously be called as the center of curvature for this particular spherical surface here. Similarly, for this particular surface also, we will have one center of curvature when this particular curved surface will be the part of it. Okay. So, I will have one center of curvature somewhere here, let us assume, and I have one more center of curvature here for the right side surface, this point, let us assume. So, in these cases, what will happen is a lens will have two centers of curvature. Okay. So, let us uh, rename them as like say C1 and C2. C1 and C2, these two are the two centers of curvatures. And if I join these two points by an imaginary line, let us Okay, so if I have an imaginary line like this, then we will call this as principal axis. This is the principal axis for this particular lens. Okay, so here I have a center of the lens, geometric center of the lens. I will denote it by with O. So this O is optic center. O is the optic center for the lens. Okay. Now, this particular circular part, if I see from this direction, if I see in this direction, it is something like a circular part. So, thin at the center and thicker at the edges. Okay. So, now this particular uh, circular part is exposed to light. Okay. So, I will measure this diameter and whatever the, the area exposed to light depends upon this. Okay. So, this one is called as an aperture. So, if I say the aperture is small, that means smaller portion of the lens is exposed to light. So, I can measure the aperture by way of diameter of the lens. Right. So, if the diameter is less, I say the aperture is less, smaller. So, whatever we discuss these lenses, we assume that the aperture is smaller. When the aperture is smaller, that means aperture is com smaller compared to the radius of curvature. So, from the optic center to the center of curvature, either on towards the right side or towards the left side. So, that means OC1 or OC2, these distances will be the radii of curvature for the lens. So, having two centers of curvature, we will have two radii of curvature. Point to be noted here is that it is not a compulsory or mandatory that the two radii of curvature should be equal always. Okay. They can be equal or they need not be equal also. But, so this radius of curvature will be very large compared to the aperture. That is our right assumption. But assumption as of now. Okay, so under such situation, either whether I take a concave lens or a convex lens, for this also we will have 
two centers of curvature very much similar to this okay so such lenses where the aperture is small compared to the radii we will call them as thin lenses thin lens so thin lens is a lens where the aperture is small compared to what compared to the radius of curvature of the lens it can be any radius of curvature either the left side or the right side whatever it is okay so our focus will be our discussion will be based on only the thin lenses now if i have the assuming that this is the principal axis center of curvatures of these two lenses or two uh, spares spare of the lens we will define two points which is nearly halfway between them we will call this as f1 and f2 remember in the case of spherical mirrors we discuss this f1 and f2 f f is nothing but the principal focus so how does this principal focus get affected and what we we'll see now if imagine a light ray incident on the lens on this concave lens okay so this light ray is parallel to this principal axis so at this point uh, this particular portion of the lens is acting like an inverted prism so what will happen is here it will bend towards the normal and here it is bending away from the normal so if i redraw this line here is coming this way okay so actually the light ray is going this way refracting at this point and again refraction at another point so this light ray is going like this if i imagine a light ray going along this direction along the principal axis it will go undeviated because here this central portion of the lens is acting like a plain glass slab where the light ray incident here is having a normal incidence when it is a normal incidence we discussed earlier that there is no deviation of the light ray it will go undeviated okay so this light ray will go this way if the light ray is passing along the principal axis it will go undeviated now these two rays the ray which is deviated which is refracted after passing through the two surfaces of the lens okay and this one here these two are divergent they never meet each other on this side okay so these two divergent rays because they never meet i will what i'll try to do is i will retrace them back when i retrace them back they meet at a appear to meet at a point f1 okay similarly if i take one more light ray here parallel to the principal axis it also undergoes the same type of deviation so it's like this i retrace it back it will come and reach at this point here so a parallel beam of light after refraction through the lens this type of lens concave lens what's happening is it is deviating from its path when it is deviating from its path will it is not possible to get an image on this side okay so when we retrace the light rays back those refracted light rays if we retrace them back they appear to meet at point f1 so we will call it as focus principal focus if i imagine these light rays to coming at this point from this direction obviously the light rays after passing through this lens they will deviate in this direction over here and when we retrace them back they will tend to appear or meet up to the point f2 so one is the principal focus f1 and this is the principal focus f2 okay now because the light rays are divergent we will call them call this as a diverging lens
generally where we use these diverging lenses is like if at all i have a door opener a door and in the center of the door there is a hole okay so somebody knocks the door and if i wanted to open the door cautiously first i'll see through that hole who has come so if i see through the hole what will happen is we'll be able to see the person outside okay but we'll not be able to have a wide angle right so for that reason if we use this diverging lens then we'll be able to have a wide angle that means if at all i have the objects over here these objects the light rays from these objects are coming in this wide angle they are coming and i am able to see them here so i'll be able to have a wider perspective that is one advantage of the diverging lenses clear now these light rays they are coming from infinite distance they are parallel to the principal axis okay when they are parallel to the principal axis and they are passing through it they are divergent so if at all the image is formed for them the image will be formed at this particular focus okay we can call them as primary focus f1 and f2 both okay so if at all the object is not at infinity it is closer to the lens how does the image gets formed let us see that here let us assume a concave lens this is the principal axis let us say this is f1 this is the optic center and here i have f2 okay now i assume the object is somewhere here this is the object from this object we need to know the position of the image so what i'll do is i'll take a light ray parallel to the principal axis actually speaking the deviation or refraction will take place at the two surfaces but for our convenience what we'll do is we'll combine those and then say it is going like this okay this is for our convenience only really it is not happening that way okay so the light ray is going this way one light ray it is after refraction at the two surfaces it is going this way so when i retrace its back it's coming like this okay another light ray what i assume is it is passing through the optic center so being the lens what we are discussing thin lens right so for these thin lenses the radius of curvature is much larger than the aperture so these light rays are much closer to the principal axis in such a case what we will assume is if the light ray is passing through the optic center it will go undeviated okay it will go undeviated so this is one point what we need to consider where these two rays appear to meet is this point here so this is the place where the image is formed it is lying between the focus and the optic center so to understand the position of the image by taking the position of the object with the help of these ray diagrams we will consider three rays three types of rays one is the light ray which is passing parallel to the principal axis after refraction appear to diverge from the focus it appears to come from the focus to be clearly drawing this light ray it should be like this okay 
So the light ray which is passing parallel to the principal axis after refraction it appears to pass from the focus. Second thing the light ray which is going through the optic center will go undeviated. There is no deviation. If at all I consider a light ray which is directed towards the focus. Let us assume that way. That means I can assume a light ray which is directed towards the focus. That means it, it is coming like this towards the focus. So if it is directed towards the focus this way, then after refraction, it will go parallel to the principal axis. So these are the three types of rays what we need to consider by plotting the ray, di ray diagrams using a concave lens. And another one, light ray passing through the optic center will go undeviated. I can as well assume this one. So these are the three points. If, if a light ray is passing parallel to the principal axis, after passing through the two surfaces of the lens, it appears to divert from the focus. If at all the light ray is directed towards the focus, okay, then after refraction, it will go undeviated, sorry, it will go parallel to the principal axis. That is first, another one. Actually happening, it goes like this. Actually observing is, it goes like this. But what I told you, for our convenience, we will drag it here at this point and then we will take this line like similarly this one also. For our convenience, we will take that way. Okay. So these are the three, three types of light rays what we will consider for forming images, for to know the position of the image formed by a concave lens. So if at all the object is at infinity, I know that it is formed at focus. If at all the object is not at infinity, it is coming towards the lens, then what is happening is the one light ray is going this way, another light ray passing through this, where these two light rays appear to meet this point. So this is the position where the image is formed. This is the object, this is the image. Okay. Here this O is nothing but optic center. This image is erect. Okay. It is erect, same size. It is upside, it is also upside. Object is upside, it is also upside, erect. Okay. And then it is smaller in size compared to the object. So it is, we will call it as diminished. it is diminished. Okay. So third one is like we will not be able to catch it on the screen. So such an image we will call it as a virtual image. It is a virtual image. So it is erect, diminished and virtual. This will be the nature of the images found by a concave lens. Okay. So if you compare, just recall this is the nature of the images formed by convex mirrors. So when it comes to lenses, it is the same types of uh, 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 images are formed in concave lenses. Okay. So now we'll discuss about convex lenses. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.